Welcome to Electron Line. Why are there different shaped galaxies? We have the regular galaxies, we have spiral galaxies, we have elliptical galaxies. So why do we have the spiral galaxies? Where did that spiral structure come from? It turns out, not surprisingly, that that's a natural result of certain conditions within the galaxy. And there's three main conditions to which we can point to that will automatically result in a spiral structure. Now typically spiral galaxies have some rotational motion to them. Without rotational motion you're less likely to have a spiral structure so rotational motion is definitely part of it but what is it? Because just because things are rotating doesn't mean you should develop or a galaxy, not you, but a galaxy uh, will develop a spiral structure. So what are those three conditions? Well the first one is what we call the density wave pattern. It turns out that stars will actually slow down and speed up depending upon the local situations. Sometimes stars will actually pass through the disk and there'll be gravitational interaction between the stars passing through the disk and the stars within the disk. Or you can see here, and here's a beautiful picture of M51. This is one of my favorite galaxies, by the way. The Whirlpool Galaxy is just an absolute gorgeous looking galaxy. I don't know why I like them so much, but they're just absolutely beautiful. And if you see this spiral R here. Notice that if the galaxy is rotating like this, the stars in the front of the spiral arm, they feel a lot of gravitational pull backwards so they would tend to slow down. The stars on the other side would tend to feel more of a gravitational pull in the other direction because that's where the higher density stars are. So you can see that stars would tend to be slowing down and speeding up depending upon where the gravitational action comes from. And because of that, there's a natural tendency for this spiral structure to evolve from that particular uh, from those particular forces. So the first one would be the differentiation in stars slowing down and speeding up causing things to bunch up. It's kind of like on the freeway in rush hour traffic. Sometimes you're going 60 miles per hour and the next moment you're standing still and you're speeding up and standing still and speeding up and standing still. And so it's it, we have these bunches where there's very little, very few cars traveling fast and you have bunches of cars traveling very slow or not at all. And it's kind of the same kind of thing. It's that natural result, but in this case it's of course not because of the driver's reactions. In this case it's simply because of the gravitational pulling in the different directions. The second reason is the differential speed and which with the radial distance. So stars will not all travel at the same speed as the whole the, as the whole galaxy is rotating on its axis, some, some stars will travel faster and some stars will travel slower. And of course, because of differential speed, you're going to get bunching up and rarefactions, places where there's not a lot of stars in certain locations. And in addition to that, we realize that it takes different amount of time for stars to go around the galaxy. In some cases, it takes 100 million, 100 million years, 200 million years, 300 million years. And so as you go farther out, it takes longer for a star to travel around the galaxy. So that means that this star will go around the galaxy faster than this star. So you can see that as you go further out, there would be a lagging of the stars taking longer to make a trip around the galaxy as the galaxy rotates. And that also will result in this spiral pattern. The third one is galaxy collisions and sometimes when galaxies get close together or they actually collide there's this pulling from the galaxy's gravitational pulling which strings out certain portions of the galaxy so certain outer regions of the galaxy will get pulled into string-like patterns that's where the tadpole galaxy comes from or the antenna galaxies or the mice galaxy where the structures get pulled out into the spiral shape as well. So those are three main reasons. There's others, probably minor reasons as well, but these are the three main reasons why galaxies that otherwise would not have a spiral structure would end up with a spiral structure. So it's almost like there's a natural evolvement into that type of galaxy under the right circumstances. That's why not all galaxies become spiral galaxies, but those that are rotating, that have this differential speed, that have this density action, the density wave action, and that have collision, uh, collisions that they've experienced tearing galaxies apart and stringing them out. And that's the reason why we have spiral galaxies as well as the other type. So everything moves at different velocities? So it turns out that, and we'll get into that in, in a little while as well, there's a remarkable uniformity in the speed of the stars, but they're not all exactly at the same speed, so some do travel faster and some do travel slower. 
The ones that travel slower lag further behind, and so they tend to bunch up in that direction. The ones that travel faster move away, and so you cause areas of less density. So there's different difference in speed. There's definitely differences in the time it takes to go around the galaxy, because let's say they all travel at the same speed. The radius arm is bigger, and so they will lag behind as well. So for both reasons, you have the structure. But when, um, when two galaxies collide, I thought that there's so, there's so much empty space between the chances of, of two of anything colliding is pretty small. Correct. When galaxies collide, there is very little actual star collisions. On the other hand, however, stars will pass by one another much more closely than they would otherwise. And because of that, there is gravitational pulling. And sometimes of entire regions of the galaxy gets pulled towards the other galaxy just because of gravitational forces that otherwise wouldn't be there. And then that happens, would there be like stars that just didn't get into the party and just float around by itself? Oh, stars get flung out away from the galaxy because of that? That's right. So there's all kinds of effects. When galaxies collide, there is pulling and tugging and, and pushing. And, and so, yeah, there's all kinds of things that happen to stars that get pushed off away from the galaxy, that get combined between the galaxies. Yeah, a lot of tearing and shredding of galaxies when they collide. What about, what about just a galaxy by itself? Does, um, does, it, does it have like a slow poke out star and then? Uh, typically, no. Uh, stars, unless for some reason get very high velocities, they will not leave the galaxy. The pull on the star is too strong for the rest of the galaxy. But we have discovered some very fast-moving stars. Matter of fact, there's a fast-moving star on its way to our solar system. It's going to get quite close. Eventually, it's going to become the closest star to our solar system, and it might cause some gravitational havoc with our Oort cloud. So who knows? <laughs> So that does happen.